Whatever you may be, worship the King of Kings, the Lord of all, the I am that I am, the bright and the morning star. Exalt him, glorify him, magnify him. Where the glory comes, God in no us to say.
for the spirit of mercy, giving thanks for the spirit of patience, giving thanks for the spirit of love, thank him joyfully for his mercy and grace that has kept him to the last day in the month of October, leaving you with 61 days left for the year 2023. We started the year. He has not left you to remain the same. He has added to you his blessing. His hand has been mighty upon your life, exalting. Rejoice before the God of heaven and earth. Magnify the living Father. Glorify the ancient of days. Thank the excellent God. Bless him his holy name. Honor to his holy name. Adoration to his holy name. Praise to his holy name. What a mighty God we serve. In Jesus precious name we have given thanks. Almighty God, that is your name. You will never share your glory with any man. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God, that is your name. Lord, Almighty God, oh yeah, that is your name. As you will never share your glory with any man. You will never share your glory with anybody, Almighty God. That is your name. You are the Lord. That is your name. You have never shared your glory with any man. You have never shared your glory with anybody, Almighty God. That is your name. Loud, Almighty God. Who oh, you that? Hallelujah. You will never share your. Oh yes. Oh, oh, you will never share your glory with anybody. Oh, yes, Almighty God, that is your name. Oh, you are the Lord, that is your name. You have never shared your glory with any man. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God, that is your name. Lauda. Kapatona na kate safilia barataskelia de bakotelia. Hallelujah, you will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God, and that is your name. I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. That's all the God is, my friend. I'm happy, I'm happy. I'm happy, that's all the God is, my friend, louder. Oh, yes, I'm happy, oh, I'm happy, that's all the God is, my friend. I'm happy, oh, I'm happy, I'm happy, that's all the God is, my friend. Mulayo, 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 Omo Loro Lore Mi, Mulayo. Mulayo, Mulayo, Omolo, Lore, Milada, Mulayo, Mulayo, oh, Mulayo, Omolo, Lore, Mi, Mulayo, oh, Mulayo, E Mulayo, Omolo, Lore, Mi, Mam, Api, I'm Api, I'm Api, that's all the God is, my friend, I'm Api. I'm happy, I'm happy, that's all the God is, my friend. I'm happy, oh yes, I'm happy, oh I'm happy, that's all the God is, my friend. I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, that's all the God is, my friend. Jehovah, oh Jehovah, you the mortal you lay, Jehovah you lay, you are little die above all. Oh yes, you are little die above all that God. Oh yes, you are little die above all that God. Oh, you are little die above all that God. Hey, Jehovah you lay. Oh, Jehovah you lay. Oh, 
Ota Yule, Jehovah Yule, You are little die above other. You are little die above other God. Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. Man, Jesus, come, cast Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. Man, Jesus, come, cast Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for your mercy. We are grateful for your love. We are grateful for your kindness. Grateful for protection. Grateful for provision. Grateful for guidance. Grateful for defense. Grateful for shield. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your mercy that reigns over our life. Thank you for your mercy that reigns over the affairs of our family. Thank you for your mercy that reigns over all that concerns us. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Let your name, O oh God, forever be praised. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Let's go to our Bible again for today. James chapter 4. James and chapter number four. James chapter four. What I'm going to do for today. James chapter number four. Are we together now? Are we there? James chapter 4. We read together very loud and clear. From whence comes war and fighting among you? Come they not ends, even of your lust, that war in your members. Ye lost. And have not. Ye keep and desire to have, cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask a means that ye may, may consume it upon your lust. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace, whatsoever he said. God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the only. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your eyes, ye sinners. Purify your heart. Ye double minded, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaven. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judges his brother speaketh evil of the Lord. And judges the Lord. But if thou judges the Lord, thou art not a doer of the Lord, but a judge. There is one lawyer who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou 
thy judges are not there. Go to now. Ye that say today or tomorrow. We will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get me. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morning. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for the time a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to see, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boasting, all such rejoice in evil. Therefore, to him that goeth to do good and doeth it not, to him is a sin. Let's draw lessons from there. Under the teaching, understanding the armor of God. If not yesterday morning, it will be on Friday. I told you there are three poisonous spirits that must not enter to the heart of the man. I think it was Thursday morning. Three poisonous spirits. Friday. That must enter the heart of the man. One, the spirit of lust. Two, the spirit of anger. Four, the spirit of envy. And I told you other demons attached to them. It's interesting to know that Apostle Paul, in this James chapter 4, says something serious about this thing. Worldliness, lesson number one now, from our Bible reading today. Worldliness is founded upon lust, envy, and pride. Is anybody taking note of anything? Worldliness is founded upon three things. Lust, envy, and pride. That is lesson number one. Lust, envy, and pride. Lesson number two. Prayer failure. Prayer failure is founded upon lost. Lost. The reason many pray and not receive answer to their prayer. Lost. Lost. Lesson number three. Lesson number three. Lesson number three. Lost father's envy. Lost father's envy. So the father of envy is lost. I'm not in that study for you. I will never be study for you. I will not be showing you one after the other. But well, I still going to come back. Lost father's envy. So the father of envy is lost. That's number five. Until you kill lost, envy, anger, and pride, you will never be close to God. 
until you keep lost, envy, anger, and pride, you will never be close to God. Unfortunately, there are two categories of pride. The loud pride. Loud that is expressed. And those, that kind of pride are rooted in certificates, professionalism, achievement, perception, progress, and all of that. That is silent pride. Those are the pride of the pretenders and the hypocrites. They want everybody to believe that they are humble. So they hardly talk, they hardly express their anger, they, they hardly the act. But you see, it will be difficult for you to identify their pride. Their pride. If he talk to them, they will tell the person, thank you, sir, they will, res they will respond respectively. But by the time they will hear their feedbacks and their reaction, they will be shocked. They will be shocked at the feedback and the reaction they will get. Right. If you don't kill lost pride, anger, and envy, you cannot be close to God. Now, this is the consequence of that. The wider the gap between you and God, the longer it will take for your prayer to be answered. Do you understand now? Now, for example, let me give you an example. Some of you are listening to me from the Lord. Some in Canada. Some in Australia. Some in UK. Hmm? Some in Nigeria. Scattered like that. If I say, okay, December, here is December. We want to give every member souvenir for December. Somebody that is living close to me, either the next street or the next building away, it will cost the person nothing to get his or her own souvenir. The farther the distance, the more costly it becomes for you to get your souvenir. Listen, the same way it is really surely, the farther the gap and the distance between you and God, the difficult it becomes for you to get the answer to your prayer. Why? Many interruptions of the devil on the way, as close as Daniel was to God. How can a man call the first day and instantly God answered. But between Daniel and God, the prince of Persia arrested the man, the angel, bringing the answer to the prayer. Many of you, you are not ready to be close to God. That is pride in many, anger in many. Lost in many. In many. I level of envy in many Christians. How do you want to be close to God? How? If you don't kill it, you can't be close to God. And if you don't, if you, if you are not close to God, most of your prayer will be wasted. You see the verse 3. Ye ask and receive not because you ask and miss. When you are closer to God, you'll be able to know His mind. He can be able to, He will freely tell you what He expects from you. 
what he expects from you. Understand this carefully well. Carefully. Think lesson number six. The best way to resist the devil is not fixed by prayer. It is fixed by fighting the lust in you, the envy in you, the anger in you, the pride in you. The more you fight those four, the more you resist the devil. So when you say, get behind me, Satan, Satan will quietly leave, will not question you. But if those four are there, the Bible calls you adultery because of the lust. The Bible calls you adulteress because of the lust. The Bible calls you murderer because of the lust. So every time you are waging war against the lust in your heart, against the envy in you, against the anger, against the pride, you are resisting the devil. And re successful resistance of the devil is a major deliverance. Every time you do not allow the devil to succeed against you, you have obtained a major deliverance. Successful resistance of the devil is a major deliverance. Major deliverance. Major difference. Understand that carefully. Then the last statement here. Nothing can a man do without permission called grace of God. Nothing can a man do without the permission called the grace of God. Not. That's why he wrote against boasting. Some of you boast. I will do this tomorrow. I will do this tomorrow. Apostle Paul is trying to make a correction. It is better that you say, if the Lord will, I will be there tomorrow. Now, this is not just the statement of mouth. It should be something rooted in your heart. The last thing. Verse 17 says, He that knoweth how to do good and doeth it not, to him is a sin. Yes. But let me tell you. You that they do good to and you turn it to evil to those that do the good to you, to you also is a cause. The way it is a cause to the person who knows how to do good and refuse to do it for whatever reason. The same way is a curse for you who they do good to and you turn it to evil. You have a problem? Somebody took over your challenge? Take it to God in prayer? Or call people together? Or inform somebody that they know they can be of help? Yet you get angry. You make it to look as if they have done, they have done something evil. You have brought a curse upon yourself. If they know your situation too, they know what to do, they could not help you. They refuse to do it for whatever reason. They have also brought a curse upon themselves. For he that knoweth how to do good and doeth it not, no matter the reason does not he refuse to do it, to him is a cause. To him that they do good to us well, who paid good for evil, to him as well is a cause. I hope you have noted those seven or eight lessons. I hope you have noted them. So if anybody do you good and have taught you over and over again, 
God did not judge the way we judge. Most of it judge with emotion. God judge by motive. He judge by emotion. God judge by motive. It is the motive of the person involved that God will look at. So if the motive is just before God, no matter what you say the person has done wrong, God will overlook it. God will overlook it. So learn today that no matter what is happening, do good to all men, whether they blame you for it or not. No matter what. Now today, that you must be careful enough never to pay good for evil. Be careful enough never to pay good with evil. Somebody is giving you food. Giving you full stuff. The next thing that comes to mind is oh, only God will help yourself. Eh? It's not be easy about this glory. Your glory that cannot put food on your table. Now somebody is not feeding you. So it is your glory that cannot feed you that the person wants to collect. Like, have you, did you see that your head is not correct? Your glory that cannot feed you. Many are no longer getting favored. The doors are closed against many because they have always paid good with evil. May the Lord help you. In the name of Jesus. Now, pick your Bible. Pick your paper. Write down the following things quickly. In all these sections of our prayers today, the next prayer session is by 8.50 a.m. Remember, we are dealing with foundation. There are prayers I will want you to be praying all through. And it's going to be our personal superior prayer throughout the school of power starting tomorrow. We need this very well. Number one, merciful Father, have mercy upon me. Merciful Father, have mercy upon me. Number two, by your mercy, O oh God, let new season start in my life. New season start in my finances, start in my calling. Start in my ministry. You keep adding all areas of your life. Remember to increase your children. Let new season start in my life. By your mercies, O oh God, let new season start. Number three, by your mercies, O oh God, stop the hand and the work of the enemies in my life.
stop the end and the work of the enemies in my life. And your mercy, O God, stop the work and the end of the enemies in my life. Number four. Lord, have mercy on me. All the prayers I've been praying for myself and the ones they have been praying for me to testimony to the glory of your name. Have mercy on me. Turn the prayers and be prayed for myself. The prayers that they have been prayed for me. Turn into testimony. By your mercy, O oh God, deliver me from any negative spirit. Magnify the Lord with me. 
Exalt the name of Jesus. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, exalt the name of Jesus. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. He magnify the Lord with me. Oh, exalt the name of Jesus. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. Jeremiah 16 on the subject of foundation. The Bible says, after you have shown these people all these curses, curses, and then they ask you, Papa, what have we done? What have we done against the Lord our God that he has pronounced all this evil upon us? Verse 11. Then thou shalt say unto them, Because your fathers. Because your fathers. That phrase, because your fathers, is a big challenge. Because your fathers. You will not marry. Why? Because your fathers. You cannot have children. Why? Because your fathers. You will not prosper. Why? Because your fathers. You will not succeed. Why? Because your fathers. You will not lift up your hands. Why? Because your fathers. So there are problems that the only explanation is that phrase. Because your fathers. There are battles that the only explanation the Bible has for it is because your fathers. There are challenges that the only answer to them is because your fathers. The sword is raging. Fire is raging. Death is ravaging the land. Because your fathers. Because your fathers. Because your fathers. The second thing, the second because is you have done worse than your father. The first because is because your father. The second because is you have done worse than your father. Verse 12 of Jeremiah 16. Verse 12. When you go to verse 5 of Jeremiah 16, God say, I will draw my mercy, my peace, and loving kindness away from them. Ah. Oh. Why, Lord? Because they are fathers. Why, Lord? Because they have done worse than their fathers. Some of you think because you go to church, you are better than your fathers. Is it lie? Some of our fathers, even though they were not Christian, they have more integrity than we so-called Christians. Some of our fathers, even though they were not Christians, they forgive than we that we claim to be Christian. Some of our fathers, even though they were not Christian, they were more righteous and just in their dealings than we that we call ourselves Christian. Our fathers they didn't even know the law of God. So you cannot even blame them for breaking the laws. They never gave time to know God. 
But we that will give them to know God, familiarity and made us to play games. Serious games with the Lord. Why? The question that is the strength of the devil against many believers is that question. Why? Why did your father do this? Why are you worse than your father? Our fathers in those days were polygamists. They married enough as they wanted. But how many Christians can you count today who are not modern day 21st century or 20 whatever century, 24th century polygamist. Many single brothers are polygamists. At the time, they do have one lover. If I some promise 10 different sisters, I love you, I love you. So, they have turned them to laundry person. Sister K comes on Sunday evening to cook. Sister M comes on Monday. Sister N comes on Tuesday. Sister O is Wednesday. They are so they are so intelligent that they never meet themselves. And if there be a class, they may necessarily have to tell her that they quickly travel, that their great grandmother just put to bed. Triplet inside the grave, you want to go and leave it. And you want to fight for the foundation to pay. I've said this before and I will repeat it again. The strength of the evil power of your father's house. It's not the sins of your father. I mean, the strength of the evil parts of your father's house, the hold of darkness over your family life, is not the sins of your father primarily. No. It is your own unrighteousness. Your lifestyle of ungodliness. Many Christians cannot declare that they have lived a whole year genuinely holy and righteous just for one year. Many Christians, they cannot declare that. That thank God for one year they can point to sins that they have not committed. No. But many can go through the year. Some cannot celebrate one day. Some cannot celebrate one hour without lying. If they don't lie direct lie, they will lie in direct lie. Many Christians. Worse than your fathers. Why you did that or tell me? Because they are fathers. It is very easy, more easier to obtain mercy for what your fathers have done than for what you have done. Ezekiel 18 is there for you to verify. Very easy to obtain mercy and deliverance. For what your fathers have done, deliverance from the consequence of what they have done than what you have done. One of the things I find out in these days is this. It is not faulty foundation that is troubling many marriages primarily. It is the lust, the anger, the pride, and the envy in the heart of either the wife or the husband that is troubling the man. 
That's one of the things I've discovered now. In the recent time. The lust, the anger, the pride, and the envy in the acts of either of the party. That's what is probably the marriage. That's what is probably the marriage. You marry a pastor. No matter the anointing, if he has lost, he will see a marital problem. But if you marry an usher who does not have lost, you will enjoy your marriage than that of a pastor. If you marry an archbishop who has anger, eh, you have a problem in the marriage. If you marry a non-believer who does not have anger, you will enjoy the marriage than that of the archbishop who has anger. These are hard truths that must be told. The battle of marriage is not the battle of religion. It's not about whether it's a Christian or not a Christian. It's important that it's born again. But you that you claim to born again, are you truly really born again? Are you? Why is there a problem? Because of your fathers. And because you have done worse than your father. Many of you, you are the ones supplying the fuel that is keeping the fire, the strange fire in your foundation burning. Many of you, you are the one supplying the fuel that is keeping the strange fire in your foundation burning. You are the one supplying the fuel, keeping the strange fire in your foundation burning. That's the truth. But you supply the fuel. You are the one trying to quench the fire in the place of prayer. You are the one reigniting the fire with your ungodly attitude. Every anti progress power of my father's house, lose your hold and die. And you pray as if your voice will vanish and never come back again. But very soon, you get to your shop. And somebody price a product. Because you want to sell it at an actual price because that is the benchmark of profit you want to make. The next thing you tell the customer is that you see, hmm, this thing I'm buying from you, this thing that I want to sell to you, eh? this phone I want to sell to you, hmm. I got it for 4,500. And I'm selling it to you for 5,000. Only 500 is my game. Whereas you bought the phone from the distributor that you bought it from 3,000. 3,000. You have already lied. The anti progress power you just pray against, they hear you. Your prayers are supposed to paralyze them and break their hope over your life. By that life, you have revived them. You have just given them multivitamin and they become strong again. I just give them multivitamin. You will physically succeed. And send it for 5,000. But you have revived the enemy. You have re-energized the enemy. The demons that you burned over the night. You have revived them. Most of you get home at night to join the bedtime prayer. Pray aggressive and violent prayers. But as soon as the day breaks. You are the one who sent those demons to the abyss, to the grave. By your attitude the next day, 
You are the one going back to the grave and with them. Hey, demon of failure, wake up, oh. Wake up. Because by the time you get to your place of work late, because you don't want to be queried, you don't want to face the danger of being sacked. Instead of writing and you get to work 8.30, you know the benchmark is 7.45. Or instead of writing that you go to work 750, when you know the benchmark is 745, you now wish you got here 730. Or you call somebody, help me to write my name, I'm on the way. Both you and the person that help you to write the name, you are just right. You are just right. What you have just done, if you don't know, you have just sent a messenger. To those demons that wake up, oh, I sent you away last night. Please come back again. Come back again. Come back again. To be free from foundational bondage is not difficult. What makes it difficult? What makes it difficult? Because our way of life will keep re-energizing those demonic forces. Those demonic forces, we keep re-energizing them. We keep re-energizing them. This is a serious charge. I need to make this money so that in many sections we can focus on prayer and Short, short explanation. We keep emergency them. Your failure to genuinely born again will always re empower the foundational forces you are fighting against. To the end, many have been fighting against their foundation for years, and the foundation is just getting re energized on a daily basis. I was speaking to a brother yesterday morning. He may likely be listening to me now. And I told him point blank. I told him point blank. I did not my word. Okay. If you are breaking biblical financial principles, no matter the fasting and the prayer, it will not really work. If God truly loves you, fight you, don't they? God's so tough, you do participate. You believe you are the only one that has financial problem. And then you still want God to be coming true for you. Why are you troubling yourself? Why? Are you troubling yourself? Understand this carefully. She will meet by 8.50. Those prayer of personal, that personal prayer. Keep praying it, those five prayer points. She will meet by 8.50. Because by 8.50, the second session of this prayer, we want to pray against because thy fathers. Remember that because thy father, so the Bible says thy father is include your mother and your father. Both your father's side, your mother's side, your immediate family. That's what we want to do by age 50. The prayer against because thy fathers. That we are going to be addressing by age 50. Keep praying that prayer. But then, before then, I give you an assignment. Keep checking yourself. In what way are you doing the worse than your fathers? If you are not obeying the God that you believe all recently, you are worse than your fathers. You are worse than your fathers. If you are not obeying the God that you believe all recently, you are worse than your father. Unfortunately, the idols worshippers. They obey their idol to the letter. The Bible says, even the devil trembled 
before Jesus. Even the devil, he trembles before Jesus. How about you? Do you tremble? Do you fear God enough to tremble? Do you? To tremble is to obey. Satan, sir, I give you permission over Job, all right? But then, don't toss him. Toss him in. Satan tossed everything. He refused to touch Job. He went back again. Okay. Then what can, what can the man give for his life? I said, okay. Not touch him. What? Don't touch his soul. That means he must not die in your hand. Satan didn't pass that boundary. But there are many of us, where God asks you not to go, that's where you go. You will give God justified reason why you have to go. I've lost two pastor friends. Two pastor friends. I call them friends because they pick me as friends. They are far older than me. One, on the account of God says, don't pray for this person. And they went ahead. After praying for them, different churches, the same member goes to a coven and fire the pastor and arrow. And God didn't deliver the pastor from the arrow. Are you like that? Don't eat. Ah. God, I know it very well yesterday. Let me today. I will I will start the fasting tomorrow. You have finished yourself already. Start hundred days fasting tomorrow. You have just wasted it. It's a waste. Even the devil trembles. But many of you don't tremble. You need to be cross checking yourself. In what your mind was than my father. Most of us, our fathers, though they were not Christian, but they were kind hearted to people around them that we do. We now that we say we are Christian, we are spiritual, we are more suspicious. So suspicious that we now find it very difficult to be of help, of favor. Of kindness to anyone. Instead of that, we keep suspecting everybody. This one is the devil. This one is the wish. This one is the wizard. He has done worse than your father. Your father, who was an abandonist, still has people to take care of from his demonic money. You, the one God is blessing you with. Even the one that God asks you to do, you will not do. May the Lord help you. I decree over your life that today, heaven opens specially over your destiny. As you lift your voice in prayer, I cry to the God of heaven, let him answer you by fire. In the name of Jesus, every section of this prayer today will bring you major deliverance. In the mighty name of Jesus, be blessed. Remain blessed till I see you by 8.50 a.m. Shalom.